Let's go for this, Brandon. Here we are back. And I just realized I found a whole thing that, anyway. Is it lost? I did wrong. Is it lost now, or are you going to try and find a, find a way to put that in? Mm. Nah. It's not that big of a deal. It's just was... About Abraham's kindness to strangers. Yeah, it's a little small thing, right? Yeah. Not that Not that we didn't articulate that message at all in the last episode, but this well, one, that was pretty good. That's a pretty good... Yeah, this one's pretty... We've almost said so much that you should... It's almost like... Yeah. Well, okay, so just part of Abraham's kindness to strangers, um, and this goes back with the episode we did weeks ago with uh <laughs> now in Sodom and Gomorrah but in the same clothes yeah for the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham okay so and the, but then it goes on it's like yeah. that's not enough yeah yeah and any man who had hunger and came to Abraham's house Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied and anyone that came naked to his house, he would clothe with garments as he might choose. Even the guy would, like, which, like hey, you'd get him I fitted. Got, you'd get yeah. him fitted. And give him silver and gold and make known to him the Lord who created him in the earth. This did Abraham all his life. I would so, go to Abraham's house. I'm like, I'd just be hanging out there. You have all these bums hanging out there. because No wonder why he had so many people. Like, you know... That's the way to build a nation. Well, is they come and you just like hook them up and. Well, them... but I think he was kind of like pa- letting them as they were passing through. Well, I know that he was just hooking people up because that's the kind of person he was mm-hmm. apparently. But if you remember the Sodom and Gomorrah, remember how they treated people? They had they wouldn't give them clothes; they'd steal their clothes, right? They'd give them gold and silver, but they wouldn't give them food. And then they take the the skull and silver back once they were dead, starved to death. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. That was interesting. You even give them garments. They got to choose, not just like, "Hey, here's my crappy old clothes" or whatever. Yeah. Hey, like, hey, why don't you go in there and look? Try on a robe. (laughs) Pick the best one. Yeah. Just don't grab that one that has many colors. Yeah. So he actually that was still that was still still in Nimrod's. So. You know, that reminds me of a story, Mark. I have this cool little story. So this morning, I came over to someone's house, and they gave me food. They gave me shelter. <laughs> you, you haven't given me any clothes yet. Brandon, um... You got a hat? My, hey, none of your th- shirts would fit me, but if you have a hat, I'll take a hat. A hat? Get out of here. And no silver and gold. But anyways, right. thanks, Mark, for that hospitality. Now I know why you do it. It's all out of kindness now. So anyway, I, I thought that I was like, dang it. Why didn't I? That one was good because it was a exact contrast between. Mm-hmm. I mean, like. Yeah, it was important to kind of wrap up the whole Sodom and Gomorrah. And in, a, in, the, in those days, I mean, it was. A, yeah, hospitality was if you killed somebody under, you know, there's like these rules of hospitality and stuff, I guess. So you know, I, mean, I talk about that every once in a while with my with my wife, and we're talking about how things are different today than they used to be. And one of the things we talk about is how, like, you hear stories and you read in people's journals, and you know these historical accounts of someone would be like just chopping wood one day, and then a stranger would come up to them, mm-hmm. and they would bring him in, and they give him dinner, and yeah. like, you know, and like that's something that is is definitely just not done. Yeah, at least at least in certain cultures. At well, least, yeah, but, I remember. We're- Hearing stories about people during the, what was that, the Great Depression, where they would have like a sign painted on their, like a little color or something painted on their fence. And as people walked by, that would mean that they could get a a meal, a free meal from them. Wow. You know, like, like. We'll take you in for, we'll take you in, we'll help you out. Yeah, we'll give you a meal, you know, like a, I mean, it might not be a lot, but it'll be something. So what it's like there's a certain and almost to a point you get this imagery that sometimes people would travelers would even like they wouldn't be looking for like an inn they'd be looking for like a house that would take them for the night you know yeah what was up with the 
Why that one guy go to inside Sod? Why didn't he go to Abraham's Abraham's place or Lot's well, place? Well, because I Abraham guess. Lot's place would be better example. Well, I know, but they were telling stories of the past. Sure, you're right. You know, over time. Mm-hmm. I mean, and maybe anyway, but yeah, maybe Lot was out anyway Doesn't out there matter. saving people, saving people lives. So, so that there's just another thing about that. It is kind of. What another thing that's not emphasized so much in the, the Bible, account. you know, but then also, but then it, whenever you're reading the New Testament and stuff, or even in the Old Testament, there's always talk about helping the widow to stranger, you, you know, yeah. the orphan and stuff. And it's like, oh, well, this makes sense because this was a big deal, you know, it's kind of you're like, right. anyway, that, that they would, that uh help people and especially being in a, in a desert area yeah you gotta have one one day without the right resources and you're gone yep so okay so we're um today we're going on with abraham so and now and isaac abraham and oh yes the the abraham and isaac story so the one that we all have heard yeah well yeah, so we're we've just gonna repeat it in the one, exact We've heard same it in story. one perspective, but um, now um, just the basic part of it is that when Abraham was, he had they had in the last episode we talked about uh, the angel came, the three angels came to the tent, and once one said, "Hey, oh by the way, you, your wife is yeah, she you're gonna have a a kid," She's, and then. And in the Bible, she laughs. Yeah. And actually, that's why they named her Isaac, right? Yeah. I think that this it means what laughter they say. or something. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so so, uh, but she she laughed because she's like, dude, I'm like, you know, like eighty years old. So, but yeah. after that whole thing happened with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was ninety nine years old. She was ninety, and. And Pretty old. when he's a hundred, she bear she has a kid, and they're like, "What the heck?" Yeah, what was their diet like? They had they must have been really good good health. Well, but even the she she said that I'm past the age of bearing, you know, or for sure. it being with woman, whatever, yeah. you know, kind of menopause. I'm way past that. Yeah, yeah, like that whole right. thing stopped. You know? So that 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 actually leads so it was us to believe true miracle. That there was a miracle. Yeah, it was some kind of miracle. So, uh, I mean, she's a, she's ninety some years old. So anyway, they had that the kid, um, and um, there's a whole thing with kind of uh, growing up. Uh, there's there's Ishmael, who was what thir- fourteen years older. Yeah, whenever he was he was fourteen years older. He when he was thirteen, he got circumcised. circumcised. So a year later, his little bro was born. You know, right after after that covenant, and that's the thing. Yeah, where it was oh, it was a fulfillment of that whole thing is that you're actually, you know, God Abraham was obedient, getting circumcised and doing what he should, and all of a sudden, a year later, they have a kid name him Isaac and uh about when they're a little older um I think Isaac was five years old and 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 Ishmael was was you know older so in his teens somewhere he like he put he had a bow and arrow because Isaac was or Ishmael was always like play with that yeah and he had it aimed at him like he was going to kill him and maybe he was you know you get in fights with your brothers and sisters and you do stupid stuff but then uh sarah saw that and she said i no, you know get this kid out of here and Got that's it, whenever yeah. ishmael and and them and and hagar get kicked out of the house for good yeah and uh then he goes off and goes down to Egypt and that's where Hagar was from and he marries an Egyptian woman and, and anyway their story and then the, but they end up coming back mm-hmm. and living with Abraham and Isaac or yeah Abraham Isaac and them and getting along pretty decently 
And so this is like way older. They're, um, yeah, there's, yeah, because there's the, there's that whole story with the tent pegs and all that, but that doesn't matter. So, so they're, 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 they're younger brother, you know, they're brothers. So they're, they're razzing each other. And in, in chapter, uh, chapter 22 at the, towards the end, um, in verse 40, uh, Isaac, the son of Abraham was growing up in those days and Abraham, the, his father taught him the ways of the Lord and the Lord was with him. And when Isaac was 37 years old, yeah. Ishmael, his brother, was going about with him in the tent. You know, they're kind of just going back and forth. Yeah. They're in the tent, but they're kind of razzing each other. Okay, and in verse 42, read this. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was 13 years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us. And I did according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to my father. And I gave my soul unto the Lord. And I did not transgress his word, which he commanded commanded my father. Yeah, so he's like bragging. He's like, dude, you weren't even, man, a year before you were even born, I'm a teenager. I was coming in, into my manhood and everything. And guess what? I got, you, your dad, your dad was commanded to get circumcised. And I, t I did it too. I and took it. And that was painful. I took the cut. You were a baby. What yeah. happened to you? And then Isaac answered. He says, <laughs> I like what Isaac answers this. He says, why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh, which thou didst take from thy body concerning which the Lord commanded thee? You know, he's like, why are you? <laughs> it's kind of like a little, a rag, like kind of yeah. a. Uh, it's like the Lord commands it. And it's like a small little thing. And like just this little it. teeny piece of flesh. And I bet you for you it was even tiny, because, you know, kind of like a small, like a, 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 a rank on his manhood. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, as, and then, and then he goes on and says, as the Lord liveth, the God of my father, Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, take now my son, Isaac, and bring him up an offering before me. I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. Yeah, <laughs> he's he, he's like, oh man, this. Uh, so he's kind of like one upping him. He's like, man, shoot, you just got a little teeny snip, you know, just just the little snip on the tip. Yeah, he's like, and I I had that when I was eight days old. Yeah, okay, I don't, but if if my if God commanded it me to be sacrificed, like. Abraham to sacrifice my my whole body, I do it, you know, kind of like one up yeah. him. Yeah, um, be careful what you say yeah, though, because do in forty five, and the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord, and he thought to try Abraham in this manner. <laughs> so little did they. Okay, so I like this part because, it, like in the Bible, you're just like okay. Um, um, in 22, Genesis 22, it says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, here I am I, you know, and take thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest and, and give the sacrifice. It doesn't explain why. No, not, not so this one has a backstory of them, like of, of them kind of like one upping each other, the brothers, it was a challenge, you know, as brothers do, uh -huh. and yeah, this, that this puts a little, this puts a lot more. Um, it it it's not. It was never satisfying. I don't. I, I doubt it's still for anybody. Yeah, but to be like what, like so, the Lord just wanted to ask Abram to sacrifice Abraham to sacrifice his son, and that's yeah. It. And it and according to this, it's almost like like. Like one was boasting and then another was boasting and then he, he kind of went to the ultimate and God's like, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, he's you like, know? yeah, he's like, yeah, you guys think you guys are so good. Watch what your dad will do. Oh, that could be too. You know? Yeah. The, well, I mean, yeah. Could, but if, you, you're, you're, you're bragging about this. You're bragging about 
what you would do. Yeah, you what you would do. Let's see what your dad would do. Your dad will actually, yeah. And then all of a sudden it goes into this thing kind of like uh, Job. Do you remember? Um, yeah. In the book of Job where it's this weird thing where this story starts off where there's the devil kind of going back and forth yeah they're both with they're, the lord with god like talking on how on how on how if abram if abraham can break or not or if yeah he, and well in job it's like hey like oh job job you've prospered him so much and it, it's the same story here so we'll just go but it's the the devil uh so let's um in 48, 47, 47. Yeah. The Lord says in the same Satan, whence comest thou? And he says, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. And then 48 at the end. Um, I've seen all the children of the earth who serve thee and remember thee when they require anything from thee. Yeah, yeah. So totally. this is, so the, the devil's kind of like, yeah, I, I, you know what I've, I've observed how, whenever they need something from you, they're they're really yeah. obedient. Yeah. And in forty nine, you read that. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. So that's yeah. So when they need you, the they'll start doing what you, what you've required of them. Otherwise, they don't even think about you. And then. Uh, Go for the. And hast thou seen Abraham the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and who he served thee, and erected altars to thee wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth, and now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee, he has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord, he has forgotten. For amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offering, neither burn offering, nor peace offering, nor ox, lamb, nor goat, and all that he killed on the day that his son, of all that he killed on the day that his son was born, weaned. So whenever his son, I guess, stopped breastfeeding, is that, that's what weaned is? Uh, I'm maybe, pretty sure. Maybe, yeah. It it's like sense. a day, a celebration day, because, you know, now the kids kind of, they're, independent i don't know this is just speculation yeah, weaning. but uh are you gonna look it up yeah that's good um so he had a big feast and and uh uh shem and shem's son came to it and you know he had a big feast for everybody yeah. and they're probably a blessing day it might have this might have been a big deal i don't um did you look it up? Well, yeah, but the problem is, is it's an, the term's applicable for today too. So, and today people don't treat it the same way. I'm is getting, it, I'm is getting it a lot of articles. Yeah, it is. I'm getting a lot of articles though about when to stop breastfeeding your kids. So I, I don't. I'm not interested in that. But uh, yeah. well, whenever it was, well, I'm saying so. So suddenly, I think it might be one of those things where because the the child's dependent on the mother, yeah. and then it's it's giving them the suddenly they're moving off of. Off that dependency to to be more of an individual, yep. you know. So it's a for them it was a big, uh, I guess, a big day. But he's saying, "Hey, man, he made this huge feast for everybody, and and in the the high priest of the land, you know, came and yeah. everything, and there was this huge thing. But did he and he had all this food, but he didn't even give all that food he gave and stuff. There was None, no, there was no offering for yeah. you." And, uh, yeah, good point. Even from this time of his son's birth till now being 37 years, uh, he, he built no altar before thee, nor brought any offering to thee for he saw that thou didst give what requested before thee and therefore forsook thee. So he's like, dude, Satan has a point. Yeah. Cause he's like, whenever he, he, um, in 54, read that. Oh, wait. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon, a, upon earth, a perfect and an upright man before me, one that feareth God and avoideth evil, as I live, where I say unto him, 
bring upon bring up Isaac thy son before me, he would not withhold him from me. Much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his, from his flock of herds. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Not only will he, not only if I asked him to give me a sacrifice, would he do it? But he'll he would give me he would actually sacrifice his son if I asked. Yeah. Him. Yeah. So he. So kind of this 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 part of the story has Satan razzing God. Yeah, which is, which, like, is a fun, uh, which is funner. It's a funner part of the story than just no explanation at all. Like you're like, why why would God do that? Yeah, like it doesn't, you know. But it's like, dude, I have no worries about it. I know his heart, and that's the thing is that that uh, I don't know why, but people always say. God, God knows what a per what a person would do, so he doesn't wouldn't even have to tempt them, you know. Sure, yeah. but it, but that's that's the way they, and the God did tempt Abraham. That's the word they used. It's it's, like, it's, does yeah. God tempt people now? You know. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just the it's just the way the writer. Yeah, the writer I know, would, but yeah. it's 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 like, well, why? As if life isn't hard enough, you know. <laughs> that that God has to make like dumb like like things that he doesn't even intend you to even fulfill like just ridiculous ideas like human sacrifice is like anyway attempts like yeah so anyway so then then satan's like well okay then if you if you think that then tell abraham as i was said yeah. and we'll see if he does it so that's how that you know that's how it's framed. Anyway, so yeah, I wonder. I wonder if he will. Well, so then in chapter twenty-three, God says to him, "Take thou, take Isaac, right? Yeah, take thou thy son, and take him to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, one of the mountains which shall be known." shown to thee for there will be for will for there sorry for there wilt thou see a cloud and the glory of the lord so god's like yep okay here we go and then i like abraham's initial reaction in verse three how shall i separate my son isaac from sarah his mother <laughs> in order to bring from him up for a burnt offering from the lord like it's so funny because like his first concern isn't like what I gotta kill my yeah. son? It's, it's like, like oh, how, I how the heck am I gonna break up Sarah? Yeah, I mean she she they're just really close. So, um, and then he comes up with his plan. He, he says to his wife, "Hey, Isaac's grown up, and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now tomorrow I'm going. I will go and bring him to Shem and Eber." Who are the high priests? Yeah. And there he will learn the ways of the Lord, for they will teach him to know the Lord as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore, and that's where Abraham learned all this stuff mm -hmm. too. Remember, he's yeah. like, he learned what, who God was. There he will know the way of serving the Lord his God. And then Sarah's like, Thou hast spoken well. Go, my Lord, and do unto him as thou hast said. But remove him not at a great distance from me, neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. <laughs> so Abraham's like, okay, oh, yeah, I won't take him too far, maybe just to the <laughs> other side. Like, And so he doesn't... Um... I love how he... Uh, and Abraham said unto Sarah, my daughter... Let us pray to the Lord our God that he may do good with us. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, I can't really. I'm not going to tell you what's going on, but let's just hope that whatever God's got some good intentions with him because I'm going to kill him. And that's what God told me to do. So, so Sarah, the night before, is with her son all night. And, you know, this. Oh, I'm going to miss you so much. She kissed and embraced him and gave him instructions till morning. Now you be good. And he's don't... 37 years well, old. And she's... Yeah. But, I mean, he, yeah, I don't know. It's a, yeah. And then she, she's like giving him instructions and, 
And then uh, on the morning, she's like, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him and gave Abraham instructions. Now she gave him Abraham, Abraham instructions. You know, like, if he's ever hungry, give him some sure. food. If he's thirsty, the, you know, all this stuff. Uh, forsake him not. Um, Don't let him go he, by himself. Yeah, do not let him go on foot. Neither let him sit in the sun. Like, she's, like, so concerned. It's such a mom, like, like, uh... Yeah, and then mm-hmm. she's weeping bitterly, and she she like even Dresses gets him. Up him. Stuff. Yeah, it's like a first day of school kind of thing. <laughs> and be, so they funny. just haven't been separated. She, uh, she selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house. Um, that she, she had been given by another king, Abimelech. One of her, one of the, one of their little one of ruses. Her husband or whatever, you know, and she her son with it and she put a turban on his head and then put and closed a precious stone on the top of the turban and and then and it, and she weeps of course as she's leaving yeah he's like okay mom all right mom i'll be fine mom <laughs> and uh so uh and in 19 and they still wept together abram they wept sarah bitterly. and isaac and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly. And all her men servants and the maid servants returned with her to her tent. Yeah. And Abraham went with Isaac, his son, to bring him up as an offering before the Lord. Like, he's like, I'm going to offer him to the Lord. And she say, okay. But he meant, I'm going to offer him. Literally, yeah. I'm going to. He put the off in offering. Yeah, he, he oh. he's gonna often. <laughs> so, um, oh, and then in twenty one, and Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael the son of Hagar, and Eliezer his servant, and they went together with them. And whilst they were walking in the road, the oh. young men spoke these words to themselves. Well, I was gonna say that. Okay, so this in the story, this makes sense too that Ishmael's going with them. Because they, Ishmael and, and Isaac had the whole discussion. Yeah, yeah. And now this is Ishmael's chance to actually see if Isaac's a man of his word. True. Because he's like, dude, 14 years old, man, or 13, I got circumcised. Yeah. I did what the Lord commanded. Now, all of a sudden, Isaac... Is is he going to do what the Lord commanded? Yeah, I bet when I bet when Abraham told Isaac about what was happening, Isaac was getting ready to to fight, like say no, and then he looked over and he saw Ishmael, like, sure, I'll do it. Ishmael's like, I did it. Hey, <laughs> wait, it, the old saying, "I'll gave some." So, <laughs> now you, <laughs> some gave all. Like I Ishmael gave some, Isaac gave all. <laughs> <laughs> just a little piece. That's so funny. I just love that. I love this story. Like he's like, this, you just anyway. So okay, so okay, so so Ishmael and Eliezer are the two servants in the Bible. It says that Abraham brought two servants. He never names who they are. Yeah, yeah. And this we. In in the in Jasher, we find out that they're actual Ishmael and Eliezer, and it makes sense too, along with the story. Yeah, you know, and Ishmael is a is an intimate part of 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 the family too. He's not just some yeah. He's the guy that's always hooking. He's he's always there. Yeah, I mean, Raz and his bro. So. Oh, that's good. Um, all right. So you you read that they they spoke these words between themselves, Eliezer and Ishmael, to have a side conversation. Yes. And, and here you take Ishmael's part, and I'll be Eliezer. Okay. So now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord, as he commanded him. Now when he returneth, he will give unto me all that he possesses, 
to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Eliezer, okay, now I'm Eliezer. Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother, which he did yeah. at one point, and swear that thou shouldst not inherit anything of all he possesses, which was Sarah's request. Mm -hmm. She said, no. So it wasn't Abraham that wanted to do that. It's Sarah. And he said, well, I got to be obedient to my wife. And, and to whom will he give all that he has with all his treasures, but unto me, his servant, Here we go, yeah. his faithful servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he desired me. To me will he bequeath at his death all that he possesses. Oh, they're all... So they're like, they're like, they, so somehow these guys know that they're, I, it was just Sarah that he didn't tell. Yeah. These guys know, you know, I guess Abraham was like, well, I can't hide it from him. I mean, this is the commandment of God. Yeah. And he, but he brought two faithful servants with him. Eliezer and his son, his other son, Ishmael. Yeah. The guys he can trust. And, but now they're they're now going they're doing to the same aside, thing that Ishmael, uh, that Isaac and Ishmael did. Like, yeah, fighting about who's who's going to get what, you know, or who's the most faithful. And so it's just funny this little side bet that's going on. So Ishmael thinks he's getting it all, and then Eliezer kind of puts him in his place. It's like, dude, they, he were cast off a long time ago. Okay, let me read a... Uh, and remember, Eliezer's the guy that threw that rock at that judge's <laughs> head and said, here, you pay you yeah. pay him. That was the best. So in 25, when Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. This is interesting because there's not a lot of Satan appearances no, in this not. whole book. No, there's not. Have we had any yet? No. Yeah. And uh, it's also interesting that he appeared at a very aged man. Because at this time, Abraham was like 140 years old or something. Yeah, but people were living a long time. Okay, yeah. There were still, I mean, Shem's still alive. Shem's six, five hundred, five, yeah. six hundred years old. So, a anyway. very aged man, humble and of contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said to him, Art thou silly or brutish? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son? He's like, what are you doing? For, and then, yeah, go ahead. For God gave thee a son in thy latter days, in thy old age, and wilt thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Dost thou not oh, yeah, this, know and this understand? Is where Satan starts makes some good points. Yeah. Does that not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord for the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth to say to him, go slaughter thy child. Like I'm like, okay, I understand that the devil's like, okay, I'm going to, but he makes some good points. Like, wait, how can God command you to kill a kid? That's not evil. Like human sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's always, that's always been people's problem with, with even the tempting of, of that this you know temptation is like well first off it just it seems so contrary to what god would want uh -huh. yeah this is just a very like this is an example of the very like um i'm trying to use the right word like zealous i will do you know it doesn't matter what it is i'll do anything type of type of a uh, follower yeah you don't question god yeah but anyway, I think I think Satan's got some. I mean, the devil. Okay. Yeah, I agree, with Satan, on this one. I'm I'm like, yeah. Okay, there is isn't there is there is there certain things that? I mean, it just makes brings up the question: Is there certain things that, like, that God wouldn't ask you to do? Yeah, anyway, like, to what lo, to what? Where's that threshold of like whether that like God would say that or not? Yeah. Apparently, it's apparently like, there's not one or just case. craziness, you know, because it's like, well, you know, you always hear about the stories like God told me to kill my kids and I did. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, like the psycho Insane person. Insane people. Yeah. Anyway, so I was just saying, I mean, you know, and I know this story is supposed to be that look at uh, look at Abraham. He's he'll do whatever I tell him. It's went too far, man. 
Like too well, far. yeah. Anyway, so but then Abraham knows that it's Satan, um, and he won't hearken to his voice. So then I Satan comes to Isaac, and he he appears to Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored, and he's like, "Do you even know and understand that that that?" Thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught. For a bet. And, because of a bet. Yeah. <laughs> now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man. And let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from oh, the man. earth. You're gorgeous. Isaac must have been... Oh, and oh, Isaac's oh. like, huh? Isaac's like, hey, dad. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful figure? What? Dad, do I have a beautiful figure? No, he says, "Hast thou heard, my father, that that the, what's this guy saying?" And uh, Abraham's like, "Don't listen to him. He's he's that's just the devil tem- you yeah, know, that's, tempting you. That's Satan over there trying to trick you. So the devil's trying his best, and uh, he he's rebuked again by by Abraham." Um, and then he gets out of there and, but he comes back. Oh, he's not done. (laughs) This is like the devil's little tactics or he, he decided he turns himself into a body of a river of water. So they entered the, yeah, the brook. Yeah. Yeah. he, He transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. So then they start going down the road into the water. First it's up to their ankles. Yep. Then it's up to their knees. Then it's up to their waist. And then all of a sudden it's up to their necks. And they're like... <sighs> and they got those like... Yeah, those the straws. straws. <laughs> the, re- the papyrus reeds. They're, they're getting ready to do... And all of a sudden Abraham's like... Wait a second. There's no I remember river. this. There was no river here. He's like... And then he forsakes the devil, and then <laughs> all of a sudden they're they're like they're like in the dirt. Suddenly dry. it's just like dry. Like so, he they went deeper, re- reached their necks, and then I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now, therefore, it is Satan that has done the all this to us. And he rebukes him. Be gone. Yeah. And so Satan's got tricked again, or found out again, and yeah, he was terrified by the voice of Abraham too. Yeah, and the place again became dry land. As I mean, imagine how silly they looked if anybody was watching. They're all like, <laughs> and they're like, "What the heck?" They're like swimming in in sand. Anyway, so so Satan tries a couple, you know, a couple tactics to try to get. To break it up, you know. He wants and, to win the bet. Yeah. Hey, you win a bet with God, you know what you get? Whatever you want. Yep, your choice. One wish. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place in the distance which God had told him of. There appeared, and a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to heaven in a cloud of glory upon the mountain. And the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. Now, this is interesting because he asks Isaac, hey, man, you see that? And Isaac's like, yeah, I see that. And then he turns and he goes, okay, now I know that Isaac's uh, accepted. And then he turns to Eliezer and Ishmael. And he says, do you also see that which is upon the mountain at the distance? And they say... And we see nothing more than like the other mountains. Yeah. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them. Nope. So he's like, okay, guys, you stay here. I'm you, taking. Yeah, you don't, you can't see this. Yeah. You have little faith. And um, he goes, abide ye, abide ye here with the, with, with the ass. Well, I, and Isaac, my son will go to the yonder mount. Yep. And worship there before the Lord. Mm-hmm. And 
Abraham took wood for a burnt offering and placed it upon his son Isaac. He's making his son carry it and took, well, but Abraham's old too, Mm -hmm. and took the fire. He's 137 years old. Like, and took um, the fire and the knife, and they both went to the place. And then 50, you want to read that? And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and wood. And where then is the lamb that is to be burnt to be the burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, The Lord has made choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. It's like, you know, nah, good question. So the Lord has chosen you actually. Remember he was remember when he was telling him, Hey, don't listen to the devil? He's like, he's, he's this freaking devil. Don't listen to him. And all of a sudden, oh, the the Lord has chosen you. So, yeah, it is. It's kind of a, that is kind of weird. It's like, yeah, earlier I lied to you when I said, don't believe the devil. I should have said, don't believe myself. Don't believe me. Like the devil was telling you the truth. Well, maybe it's the way he said it. Like, well, he's trying to razz you. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh. And then, but Isaac says, Yeah, I'll do whatever the Lord told you to do with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And then Abraham's like, Well, is there in thine heart any thought or counsel concerning this, which is not proper? Are you pure heart? Yeah, are you ready for this? Like, well, no, but he's saying, like, I don't, you need to be, you know, kind of like, a pure offering. Yeah, I don't want to. I can't. I Tell can't me, thy son, I pray thee, O my son, conceal it not from me. And here Isaac said, read 54. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O my father, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the, to the left from the word that he has spoken to thee. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this. Nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am of joyful and cheerful heart in this matter, and I say, Blessed is the Lord who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. So he's like, ah, I'm do- I'll do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, excited holy for moly, this. I this feel kid. very fortunate that I was chosen. Like, whew. That, that's when Satan's jaw dropped, like, oh, like, like, oh he did it. And Ishmael looking from the bushes, like, it's like, but I got circumcised 13, <laughs> man. And then <clears throat> I like in 61, Isaac said to his father, you know, hey, dad, I've, I said that all this stuff. He says, but bind me securely and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh and therefore profane the burnt offering. Yeah. Like Cause it had to down. be, yeah. Like, Hey, I, I have a nat- natural inclination. Whenever I start getting stabbed for some reason, yeah. I move, you know, you know, if I, you know, <laughs> so funny. if I was, you know, if I, I would like to believe that I probably wouldn't, but just in case I, try and retaliate just tie me down or, or move it's just a yeah. natural you know my body just naturally doesn't like pain for some reason and and he yeah, that's you know i mean if you if you know the mosaic law and there's all these different things that br- bones can't be broken whenever there's an offering made all this different stuff yeah you're right there's got to be a little thing without blemish so hey just secure me i'm gonna not resist but just to make sure that everything goes exactly the way. Because actually, that's one of the biggest things is in the olden days, before they had the guillotine. And actually, the guillotine wasn't always foolproof. But but whenever they would use an axe, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't always cut all the way through the per, you know for a beheading. Okay. It wouldn't always go exactly as planned. So they'd have to swing again. Chop you it know, top, chop it again and again. You oh, know, gosh. what I'm saying, it wasn't always this clean thing. So, yeah. also, he's saying, "Hey, let's just make sure this goes as smooth as possible." So, and then he makes sure, "Hey, when thou hast slain me, 
and burnt me from an for an offering take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes and bring it to my mother Sarah oh, nice this is his thought was still with his little mom yes he's a sweet kid so he's all he gets ready to kill him you know got him all secure um and they both weep together abraham heard the words of isaac he lifted up his voice and wept when isaac spake these words and abraham's tears gushed down yeah, he upon isaac it. his son in and uh and i think josephus i think his tears actually fall right into isaac's eyes like <laughs> oh how how uh so and Isaac wept bitterly, and he says, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord our God as he has commanded. And then the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced, and, but the eye, so their hearts rejoiced, but their eyes weep bitterly, whilst their hearts rejoice. Okay. Abraham binds him, places him on the altar, upon the wood. Isaac stretches forth his neck upon the altar before his father. Now, in in the mosaic thing, they would take like the a cow or whatever and cut its throat. Hmm. It just like bleed out. I don't know how, but I'd say it's pretty disgust. Like if you ever, it's it's I can gross. Imagine, I can imagine. Yeah, I'm imagining right now. I'm just kind of yeah. Yeah. So he's got his ape and uh, so. Isaac's got his neck stretched forth. He's bound, you know, and Abraham's stretching his forth his hand to take the knife so and to close. slay his son as a it's burnt so offering. And and then all of a sudden, at that time in 66. Um, they, oh, my gosh. Good. <laughs> at that time, the angels of mercy came for the Lord. And spake to him concerning Isaac, saying... <laughs> but I like this part, because at that moment when it's just going to happen, yeah. the angel, angels of mercy come forth, but then they go to God to yeah, speak to him. Yeah, instead of... Yeah. He's not there, anyway. O oh Lord, thou art merciful and compassionate king over all thou hast cre created in heaven and in, and in earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and Isaac, his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac, the son of Abraham, thy servant, is bound to do the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for them, O Lord. So they, 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 like, I don't know where God's at, but you would think he'd be kind of watching because... Yeah. But that you know they have these two angels go uh, or these angels of mercy and like plead the case and then God's like, okay, yeah, I know, that's the best. He calls from heaven he says, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do any, do thou anything unto him, for I know that thou fearest God in performing this act, and in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And then Abraham's all, yes. That's what I was hoping all along. I, uh, I, I was going to do it, man. And all of a sudden, there's a ram caught in a thicket. Right there. By his horns. Yep. The God had sent a ram already on the way. That was the ram which the Lord had created in the earth in the day that he had made the earth in heaven, which is weird. Yeah, I'm like, what is this? Is this talking they trying something to refer about to here? like some astrology thing or something? Some kind of, I don't know. It's yeah. saying this thing was prepared for the Lord had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. So from the beginning of the world, this whole thing was, and it's like I don't know what they're getting at. What kind of? Yeah, they have some kind of point they're trying to make, and it might be lost to what it, what they were actually referring to. That God knew that this wasn't going to happen, I guess. That he had, he had never intended. And maybe that's, that's like, their well, point. I'm going, to put a, I'm going to be doing this thing that most people are going to go, why would you do that? Just that I'm going to have, a, I'm going to plant a ram there. 
There's gonna be a ram. So there's evidence slowly that, like, I growing never, up. I always knew that I would it would not happen. Yeah, but what is anyway? I've never really. I wonder if anybody has any kind of ideas about like what they're meaning by this prepared from the foundation of the world. Yeah, I don't know. But of course, Satan is there. His last dish attempt. He's like, dang it, he did it. And it, but Satan tries to hold the ram back from you know. From, like this yeah. is like a total last uh the ram was advancing to abraham when satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket so he's the one that wrapped them up yeah and also abraham sees this thing moving and you know like as bang if, or whatever as if like as if if there was no ram then then abraham would have to be like, he's like well well we don't have anything else so go ahead and lay back down you know well it was a last ditch effort sometimes you do stupid stuff I guess, and seeing the ram advancing to him and Satan withholding him, he fetched him and brought him before the altar and he loosed his son Isaac from his binding and put the ram in his stead and Abraham killed the ram upon the altar and brought it up as an offering in place of his son Isaac. And he said, this is in place of my son and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. Yeah, I'm glad that they hurried up to that part. Why? Because sometimes they sometimes the way these these uh, texts read, they go through the whole process again. Yeah. Like, oh God, thank you for just like paraphrasing the story along. Yeah. Well, so anyway, this is in the room of my son, and may it be considered before the Lord in this place of my son. So anyway, they had a whole thing. And they greatly rejoiced. I don't want to really talk about much about the Sarah thing. It's just the devil's does a last ditch effort. Yeah, it's almost like an unneeded part. Yeah, he kind of like anyway. He, anyway, if you can't well, win, but if you I can't guess win against I guess one, does, try and win over the other. Maybe or. no. I, I guess it shows Sarah's faithfulness too, because he's like, hey, Satan. Okay, we'll just paraphrase okay. it. Satan goes to Sarah and he's like, hey, uh, didn't you need, as an old man again, didn't you even know, like, uh, Abraham Isaac killed Isaac as an offering and Isaac cried the whole time. <laughs> he says that. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Sarah, Sarah's like, oh, Isaac, you know, my son Isaac, I'm so sad. She continued to weep. You know, it grieves me. And, and uh, you know, she goes, oh, I had you when I was 90. And But if this is, she goes, but I console myself with thee, my son, in it being the word of the Lord, for thou didst perform the command of thy God. For whom, for who can transgress the word of our God, in whose hands is the soul of every li- living creature, Thou art just, O Lord our God, for all thy works are are good and righteous. For I am rejoiced with thy word, as thou commands, and whilst mine eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. So she's like, so well, she's like, if this what God commanded, yeah. what can I do? And then all of a sudden, and a little later, she starts go, going to seek Abraham. Yeah, you know, and uh, and. And then Satan appears to her again as an old man, and he's like, "Guess what? I tricked you. He's not. He's alive." And then, and then she dies. She dies of joy, of happiness. Yeah. So, which is weird. That's why I didn't want to tell that story. Yeah, it's kind of like a, almost like a. Is that really part of the? Is that really like? <laughs> but but they, I think they put the the Sarah part because they wanted to show that she was, even though she was a faithful or loved her son and everything and. And they had to kind of mm-hmm. deceive her to get him away from, you know, or not would, tell her. She would have that she, done it herself. Yeah. Or so. supported it. Anyway. Bless her, bless her for that. So there you go. And, and uh, I mean, uh, there's the story in the Bible. It's chapter 22. It's verses 1 through... Just the that one chapter basically. 
is the whole thing. This so this this one has a lot more yeah. detail. He's a lad in this. Exactly. Well, the word lad is it, it does refer to the word it does use the word lad in this too. Yeah, but you we know but that we he's, know he's 37. thirty-seven. Yeah, <laughs> so he's a lot older. So just be careful what how, how you boast. Yeah, because because you, you might have to live up to that boast. Yeah, it's a lesson to be learned. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, there's lots of questions and. And I know you know we kind of did did it lighthearted because it's it's kind of a I I just have never really totally understood kind of the I mean it's always been like this contradiction for me being like if you had a God that asked you to do that the, like sure you, wouldn't you you know kind of be like well what exactly like this is this is unrighteous yeah totally i, I totally so, yeah. you know but i yeah, i'm sure people have have their reasons you know why they hold up this story as as a you know because of the faithfulness and everything so and i like the extra details yeah good job abraham they all win okay abraham wins isaac won sarah won satan kind of won because it was her it was his last comment that made sarah die out of laughter yeah, but she died of happiness. in in, in yeah, she died least, in righteousness and satan probably thought he won it's like ha, at least she died mm-hmm. but uh yeah eliezer, eliezer and ishmael didn't win they're the two big losers i just love and how they're ra- up, they're walking up to the thing also. they're all like i'm like dude i'm we're get i'm getting it and then, i've been serving him for <laughs> i've been a faithful servant Anyway, so there's that story. Um, hopefully, I don't know. I like that, it. That was worth it. Yeah, because for sure. It's it's way it, it's an extension of the normal Abraham story, and it's one of those weird stories Abraham where you, Isaac story where it's the big it's the big the big Abraham story actually. Totally, yeah, and so that really is. No, you're right, and so. So it's good to have a I mean, different these are perspective. All, I mean, yeah, it's it's a great. The next time you think, the next time you think to yourself, oh, I just don't like that part about the whole offering of the son. Like, who would do that? Like, who would ask that? More, which is really the big question. Yeah. Now you kind of have, have more context behind it. Yeah, and, and if that if that, that helps you understand it better. And the ram was was placed there from the very beginning because the Lord knew that that would happen. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, um, we're gonna probably uh, continue on and with more stuff eventually with Jasher and stuff. There's some cool. more cool stories in there. Yeah, I don't know what it is yet, but we'll figure it out what yeah. next time. Yeah, and we might go on to other stuff too. There's all kinds of stuff, but these are some of the main stories that I wanted to talk about yeah. with yeah. with uh, Jasher. But there's some cool stuff with Joseph. I really like the him and Potiphar's wife. Oh yeah, the story. Like there's there's even more detail same to thing it with this. There's more context. And then even Moses, where yeah. he comes in contact with a high priest out in the desert. So the Moses thing would be really interesting to go to because there's a lot to be said there, and there's a lot of different theories on what happened. And yeah, Josephus talks a lot about Moses. Oh, good. There's tons well. of stuff in there about Mo- like all the different wars that they fought and stuff. And oh yeah, there is there is actually. A, well, that's what I'm saying. There's like even in Jasher, there's a lot more. You're like like I was listening. I'm like, geez, man, they do a lot of stuff. Like, yeah, cool. son of a gun. So, but there's some cool myths, like the sword, and, the sword and the stone. Yeah, yeah. or the rod and the yep. stone. The, the origins of different stories. Yeah, yeah. That that these that come down through the king arthur myth arthur myths and stuff and you know but were old stories you know from probably from babylon or or samaria and egypt and you know but that made have made their their way down through jewish jewish tradition and then into more modern myths you know yep but that are throughout the world so all right well we'll get out of here Anyway, have a good one. Talk to you next time. Bye.